So let's understand a concept called projection in this section. So uh, let me explain you what a projection is. Let's assume I have a vector A and I have a vector B and the angle between both of them is let's say theta, right? A projection of a vector A onto a vector B is nothing but you take this vector and make it perpendicularly fall on B and this distance D is nothing but the projection of A on B, right? So basically you have a vector, you let it fall, you let it fall onto vector B. That's what it, you're projecting A or you're letting A fall onto B. And the distance that you get on B is called the projection of A on B, right? So the projection of A, of vector A onto vector B is nothing but so geometrically, let's see, is nothing but D here. And what is D? If the length of this is A, if the length of this, if this length is A, and if this is theta, we know that D is nothing but A cos theta, right? And now we also know, so this is, let's say, let's call it equation one. We also know that A dot B, which is nothing but summation over A i B i, over all i if a is an n dimensional vector that's why i don't put any axis here a and b could be any dimensional uh, vectors here this is what a dot b is a dot b also is a multiplied by length of b multiplied by cos theta so i can write my d as nothing but a dot b by length of b what is this this is nothing but length of a length of b cos theta by length of b and length of b would cancel out and what i get is nothing but length of a multiplied by cos theta which is nothing but your d from equation one right so you can get a projection of a onto b which is nothing but your d as a dot b by length of b so without even knowing what theta is if you just know the components of a a1 a2 so on so forth a n and if you know the components of B, which are B1, B2, so on, so forth, Bn, I can compute what is the projection of a point A onto, uh, uh, sorry, of, of a vector A onto another vector B by just doing A dot B by length of by length of B. So this is a very simple idea which will be very useful uh, uh, in, in more advanced ideas that we'll learn soon. The next idea is something called a unit vector. Let's understand what is a unit vector. It's a very, very simple concept. Let's assume, again, I'll draw two-dimensional data set, two-dimensional space here or two-dimensional coordinate system here. Let's assume I have a vector A. Okay, should not tilt like this, it should be a straight line. Okay, so which has two components, A1 and A2, right? So uh, a unit vector is represented with A. So the unit vector is often represented with a cap. This is called a hat or a cap. It looks like a small hat that you can wear on top of it is nothing but, okay, let me write the formula, then I'll explain you what it is. It is A by length of A. Now we know that this is the length of A. This is the length of A. So intuitively, a unit vector is nothing but, it's a vector. It's a vector in the same direction, in the same direction as my original vector. It's in the same direction as my original vector A. So this green line is my A hat. It's in the same direction. That's important to know. So A dash is in the same direction. Same direction as vector A, number one. Number two is since you are dividing the vector A by length of A, the length of unit vector is one. Because what are we doing? We're taking the whole vector. We are dividing it by its length which means the length of your unit vector will be one, right? So this is the concept of a unit vector. This will come in very handy when we learn uh, more advanced concepts of linear algebra. Uh, I've just defined some simple terms here.